What's up gamers, Aaron Shack here. I wanted to make a video for Sekiro Shadows Die Twice about some of the best places to farm XP and resources. And one of the best places to do both is here at the Sunken Valley Gun Fort. There is also another location I'll show you later in the video that gets you even more XP. But this one is really good because not only do we get XP, we also get to get some of the rare materials we need for upgrading our prosthetics and unlocking all the different ones. So now that we've backstabbed this first guy, I usually waste no time in running away. We got 297 XP for killing him, which isn't much once you get really, really far in the game. But once you've reached, in the, reached the sunken valley and you've gotten to the gun fort, you can pretty much run through this entire area backwards, backstabbing everybody. So once you have this checkpoint here, you can backstab that guy. You can backstab his friend, another 297. But you're also going to get rare resources. And one of the main ones being the fulminated mercury that's so hard to find for your later upgrades. And then you can just slowly go through this area here. And just basically work through here and backstab all of these guys. And I'll show you the route I use. This is typically how I do things without fail. And then we can just grapple to here and then there. And then it's all pretty routine right here. And any of these guys could drop Fulminate and Mercury. But they also drop antidote powder, which is always nice to collect a big stockpile of that because you're you're always going to be poisoned throughout the game. And you're going to get some yellow gunpowder as well. And of course, you can see I have the bell demon enabled because that's actually going to give us chances at better loot dropping. So we're going to let that happen. So you go up over to this ledge right here, lock onto this dude, drop on his head. I mean, this is fairly routine and a quick way to get some good XP once you're kind of midway through the game or so. And I use this for a long time to really level up my character and try to unlock lots of skills and stuff. And that's pretty much the route. And basically, you want to avoid running down the path and triggering any of these mines there because that would alert every single gunner to your location. So yeah, this is pretty much the mid-game area. That if you want to just keep resting at the at the idol here and then running through there and using it as a way to quickly acquire the resources and XP you need, that's great. As far as other places, you know, if you're really early in the game, running up in the Ashina Castle in the Annie Chamber and fighting some of those tough guys might drop decent XP early on in the game or just any area that you can sort of loop through like we have with the Sunken Valley Gun Fort. Any area that you can just loop through like that and kill enemies quickly and then reset is good. But this one, I believe, is the best in the game, the flower viewing stage. Now, some might say that uh, the sanctuary is good because it does have a similar type of enemy, but there's like three or four of those dudes. And it takes longer to fight all of them. So I'm here to give you the quickest strategy, the easiest strategy that really allows you to just sort of put your brain on autopilot and not really have to focus too hard here. And there's no risk of you like getting murdered or any anything at some point, really. Um, so what I recommend here, if you have High Monk, that's always fun. Uh, double Ichimanji is good. Um, the night jar slash is also pretty good because you can dodge away and and hit like so with these guys and you can have a lot of fun honing your skills against these lightning dudes but first you're going to want to backstab this guy because he drops major xp 530 that means this guy over here is going to do the same thing so if you just slowly jog up behind him get the backstab this guy drops a lot of xp and you get to practice your lightning reversals so jump in the air reflect the lightning and attack right back at him and then you can just keep attacking you can enable high monk uh, to build up some posture damage you can also use that to sort of dodge the uh, kanji there not have to worry about dodges or mercury counters so that's another 1060 right there 
So we've already gotten like 2,000 XP, and if you want, you can go over here and kill this guy. Although I don't always do it, because that's, that's a lot of extra time just for another 500 XP. And then basically, you just come right back here, and then just reset again. It's fast. There's almost no way I can die, and if I can die, you know, you know then I just res and, and, and come right back and get the job done then. So a lot of people think that the one up here uh, in the sanctuary is better because you fight more of those lightning dudes, but I disagree because there's actually like several of them. And then, you know, there's always the risk that, hey, you might die, you might not be good enough to kill them. And you, you really have to put a lot of effort into this fight. You know, it's not something you can just turn your brain off, zone out, turn on a podcast, and just grind away at XP for a couple hours. And before you know it, maybe you've upgraded most of your skill tree in the game. So usually what I do here, if you really want to go this route, you just slowly lure each one. Don't, don't try to accidentally alert all of them. And if he does attack, he has that kind of swoop attack, and you can just jump on his head, and that's done. And High Monk and Ichimonji will build up his status bar very quickly. And then this last guy, little sword dude. And so I'll showcase how you can also use uh, my favorite, the Ichimonji double. That's always good. You can weave it in during combat, or you can sneak it in like I have. Their deflects. Not very hard to build up posture damage. So some people think that one's better, but it can it can easily go haywire if you end up alerting all three of those guys all at once, or you end up getting overwhelmed, or they start triggering their lightning attacks one after the other after the other. So definitely like this video if you found it helpful or informative. Um, subscribe to the channel for more Sekiro stuff. Um, I've played through the game once. I'm currently on the second playthrough, and I'm, I might consider a third playthrough and, and maybe doing some harder uh, challenge runs and stuff like that at some point. And I also want to make guides to help other players get as far as I did. But yeah, this uh, I've almost upgraded all the skill trees. I just have a little bit more grinding to go, and it gets really grindy the later in the game you get, the more you upgrade your skills you know the slower it gets the more xp it takes so uh a guide like this is definitely helpful in that case so i want to thank you for watching stay tuned for our next video don't forget to ring that notification bell so you don't miss a single video and we'll see you on the next one take care